Little Johnny was sitting in class behind a girl named Sally. The teacher asks the class, Who created the earth? Little Johnny pokes Sally in the back with his sharpened pencil, and she jumps and says, My God! The teacher says, Yes, Sally, God did create the earth. Sally sits down. Then the teacher asks, Where do you go after you live a good life? Little Johnny pokes Sally again, and she jumps up and says, Heavens to Betsy! The teacher says, Yes, Sally, you will go to heaven after you live a good life. Sally sits down, knowing full well Little Johnny was poking her. Sally gave Little Johnny an angry glare, and she turned around. Then the teacher asks the class, What did Eve say to Adam after their 77th child? Little Johnny pokes Sally harder this time, and Sally jumps, turns around, and says, If you stick that thing in me one more time, I swear I'm going to lose it! <laughs> A couple goes to the town hall to get married. They arrive just seconds before closing time, but are able to catch a judge just as he's about to leave. The groom asks, Sir, will you marry us? The judge says, First, you'll need to go to the town clerk and get a marriage license. They catch the town clerk just as he's locking up and get a license from him. When they return to the judge, he points out that they have filled in the names wrong, with his where hers belonged and vice versa. They rush back to the clerk's office, catch him again, and get another license. This time, the judge notices the clerk has filled in the date using the wrong format. Again, they catch the clerk as he's attempting to leave, and after three reissued licenses, the judge is finally satisfied. The judge says, I hope you appreciate why I made you keep going back. If there were any irregularities in the license, your marriage would not be legal. And any children you might have had would be, putting it delicately, technical bastards. The groom replies, that's funny. That's exactly what the clerk called you. <laughs> An elderly couple notices that they're getting more forgetful, so they decide to go to the doctor. The doctor tells them that they should start writing things down so they won't forget. After the couple gets home, the old lady asks her husband to get her a bowl of ice cream. You might want to write it down, she says. The husband replies, No, I can remember that you want a bowl of ice cream. She then asks her husband to put some whipped cream on it. Write it down, she tells him. Again, he says, No, I can remember. You want a bowl of ice cream with whipped cream. The old lady adds that she would like a cherry on top. Write it down, she tells her husband. And again he says, No, I've got it. You want a bowl of ice cream with whipped cream and a cherry on top. About 30 minutes later, the old man returns from the kitchen. He hands his wife a plate of bacon and eggs. The wife stares at the plate for a moment then looks at her husband, shakes her head in disgust, and asks, Where's the toast? <laughs> A cheating husband decided to write this letter to his wife. My dear wife, you will surely understand that I have certain needs that you, as a 54-year-old, can no longer satisfy. I'm very happy with you, and I value you as a good wife. However, after reading this letter, I hope you will not wrongly interpret the fact that I will be spending the evening with my 18-year-old secretary at the Comfort Inn. Please don't be upset. I shall be back before midnight. When the man came home late that night, he found a reply to his letter on the dining room table. My dear husband, I received your letter and thank you for your honesty about me being 54 years old. I would like to take this opportunity to remind you that you are also 54 years old. I would like to inform you that, as you read this, I will be at the Hotel Fiesta with Michael, one of my students, who is also an assistant tennis coach. He is young, virile, and like your secretary, he is 18. You, being a successful businessman with an excellent knowledge of math, 
will understand that we are in the same situation, although with one small difference. 18 goes into 54 a lot more times than 54 goes into 18. <laughs> one evening, a family takes their frail, elderly mother to a nursing home, hoping she will be well cared for. The next morning, the nurses bathe her, feed her a tasty breakfast, then sit her in a chair near a window overlooking a lovely flower garden. She seems okay, but after a while, she slowly starts to lean over sideways in her chair. Two attentive nurses immediately rush up to catch her and straighten her up. Again, she seems okay, but after a while, she starts to tilt to the other side. The nurses rush back and once more bring her back upright. This goes on all morning. Later, the family arrives to see how the old woman is adjusting to her new home. So, Ma, how's it here? Are they treating you all right? They ask. It's pretty nice, she replies. Except they won't let you fart. <laughs> Billy Bob had long heard the stories of an amazing family tradition. It seems that his father, grandfather, and great-grandfather had all been able to walk on water on their 18th birthday. On that special day, they had each walked across the lake to the pub on the far side for their first legal drink. So, when Billy Bob's 18th birthday comes around, he and his pal Bubba take a boat out to the middle of the lake. Billy Bob steps out of the boat and nearly drowns. Bubba just barely manages to pull him to safety. Furious and confused, Billy Bob goes to see his grandmother. Granny, he asks, it's my 18th birthday, so why can't I walk across the lake like Pappy, Grandpappy, and Great Grandpappy? His granny replies, Cause you was born in August. But your pappy, grandpappy, and great-grandpappy were all born in December. When the lake is frozen. <laughs> Two billionaire friends meet up for a long overdue lunch. After a casual conversation, one of them finally asks, So, how's your home life? Couldn't be better, says the second guy. I bought an elephant. The first guy looks at him in astonishment. An elephant? Have you gone mad? He asks. The second guy, smiling, replies, Oh man, let me tell you, it's the best purchase I have ever made. He grazes on the lawn, making it nice and even. The kids love him. They're always riding on his back and sliding down his trunk. It keeps them outside instead of in front of the television all day. My wife loves him too. He's super strong and helps her with moving things around when I'm not home. Let me tell you, he's the best pet I've ever had. The other billionaire scratches his chin. Yeah, that actually sounds pretty amazing. How much did you pay for him? A million bucks. Worth every penny. He was a steal at that price, replies the other man. Will you sell him to me for two million? The other billionaire asks. Oh no, what are you asking? Sell him? He's like family. How about three million? I don't know, you really can't put a price on this kind of friendship and usefulness. All right, five million. Five million? Well, okay, I'll sell him to you, but only because we're friends. A few weeks later, the two billionaires meet up again. The guy who bought the elephant is very angry. As soon as he sees the other guy, he starts yelling, What the heck did you sell to me? Not only does he not graze on the lawn, but he completely destroyed all my greenery and trees. There's elephant dung everywhere. You can even smell it inside the house. And what was that about kids? They are terrified of the thing. It's aggressive, massive, and scary. I cannot sleep because he trumpets all the time. My wife has been having nightmares, and now I won't hear the end of her bickering until I die. It's awful, the worst purchase of my entire life. The other billionaire rolls his eyes at him and says, Well, I don't know what to say.
But with that attitude, you'll never be able to sell him.